whether these projects continue without delay as a collapse of Rocco would lead to delayed completion of these projects. However, to date some of the infrastructure, proje infrastructure projects that were fronted as a reason for the approval of this investment have not been completed. A case in point is the parliamentary chambers, IGG House, among others. Honorable Speaker and colleagues, as you know, Parliament spends billions on an annual basis to rent for office space for members and staff at Kingdom Kampala, Queen's Chambers, would not be spending this money if our parliamentary chambers were completed. The other aspect was financial restructuring. The bailout also involved a financial restructuring plan to help Rocco manage its debt. Rocco had accumulated a significant liability with commercial banks, contractors and suppliers which had led to liquidity challenges. Let me briefly, as I begin to wrap up, talk about the oversight visit that we held to the office. In fulfillment of Section 6A and E of the Administration of Parliament Amendment Act of 2006, I led a delegation of some members of the Shadow Cabinet to visit this company's head office, but we were denied access. Aware that Roko Construction had received a bailout from Government of Uganda, the objective of the oversight visit was to ascertain whether the rationale for the bailout was achieved and as well to establish if the governance and management challenges of Roko were being addressed. However, it should be noted that this oversight visit did not come to fruition as I have mentioned because Roko head office located in Kawempe Tula and that was meant to be on uh, Monday 14th October when we went there we were denied entry to the premises to have an engagement with the management team thus impeding this oversight engagement. In a letter, the managing director, Mark Kohler, said that the board had rejected the planned engagement with members of parliament and the company's management. Our areas of concern, right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, government construction projects have continued to stall despite this bailout, and this raises a lot of questions. I've talked about the parliamentary chambers, whose target of completion was July 2021, but that's not happened yet. The current shareholding is unclear. And government needs to clarify this, right, Honorable Speaker. It is not known as to whether amendments were made to include government of Uganda investment and how much government of Uganda owns in equity, what type of shares, and so on. Government ought to provide an explanation to this effect. Three, government ought to appraise parliament on the latest financial standing of this company given that government approached parliament with a bailout request, I think it's prudent, right, Honorable Speaker and members, that the House deserves to be given accountability of this bailout money. Government cannot just come to parliament when it requires money. And when we are asking questions, government is missing. It's important that this taxpayer's money is accounted for. So we ask, did the financial status of the company improve? What is the status of loan repayments and payment of suppliers? What is the status of ongoing projects by the company, especially the government projects? Staff of the company have regularly reached out to legislators, right, Honorable Speaker, complaining about not receiving salaries for close to four months. Is government aware of these concerns by employees? And is government keeping an eye on this company in which it injected taxpayers' money? Are we not bothered by these concerns of Ugandans? In conclusion, right honorable speaker and members, while the government of Uganda financial intervention towards Rocco Construction Company Limited was aimed at preserving jobs, continuing important infrastructure projects, and maintaining stability in the construction sector, the glaring concerns about project delays, financial transparency, and governance reforms need to be urgently addressed. For purposes of transparency, the Attorney General should be required to lay before the House the share agreement with Rocco. Parliament has a right to know. As people's representatives, we call for continued vigilance to ensure public funds are used efficaciously and that the interests of Ugandan workers and taxpayers are protected. Honorable Speaker and uh, colleagues, I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love.
we we need the a report from finance and from attorney general in regard to this report uh, thank you so much madam speaker and i do commit that we shall bring a report about the issues the ROP has raised. However, I have one clarification I would like to seek from him. Madam Speaker, I've been here long enough to qualify as a senior member of this House. I have done several oversights <coughs> in this House as a backer bencher, did I hear properly from Rob that he went to do oversight at local head office? If that is the case, what kind of oversight do we do at headquarters of some of the entities which we have interest in? And number two, what is the procedure of doing oversight? I am wondering how someone representing this parliament, because Madam Speaker, we leave this house, this building, officially. How would someone be denied access when this person has been Officially, therefore, Madam Speaker, I want to know what kind of oversight did the LOP go to do at the local head office. Honorable members, let there is not, not, no, let's get a response. Thank no, you, he's going speaker. to bring a written response. I want a written response. He just wants a clarification, That's okay. which, which is simple. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And um, I want to acknowledge the minister's committal to bring um, a response. Hopefully, it will come. Many times, government commits to bring responses, and they don't. Hopefully, it will come. Uh, Honorable colleague, I want to encourage you to reread the Constitution to reread the Administration of Parliament Act and to reread our rules of procedure, which provide for the functions of the leader of the opposition. One is to keep the government in check. Ours is an oversight role. And as I have emphasized, Honorable Speaker, it's actually not just my role. It is the role of all of us as parliamentarians. We follow taxpayers' money. We have gone to several entities. Two weeks ago, we were in Amuru at a Tiak Sugar Factory because the government has injected 553 billion shillings. Management of Atiak received us and we held an engagement with them. And we appreciated that and we raised concerns. And honorable speaker, as you guided, I will also be tabling that report. We went today to Biopharma. It's also a private company. But government has injected 723 billion shillings. And they, Biopharma, received us. And we had an engagement with them. And we raised our concerns. They raised responses. We still have concerns. We did the same thing. We wrote to Rocco. And as always, we informed the Honorable Speaker of Parliament. In fact, when we were going to Loboa, just to take you a bit away, we did all the writings. The Minister of Health, who also received our letter, responded to my letter saying, uh, Lop, I have received your letter. Unfortunately, I won't be able to join you because I had requested that she joins us. But she signed off by saying, I wish you well in this oversight visit. Of, of course, that smelled a rat. No wonder when we went, <laughs> we made what we made. Because even the Minister of Health had previously been locked out at Lubua Hospital. But anyhow, to do with Rocco, something we did right. And uh, when we got there, the, I don't know, get man or whoever gave us a letter saying, the MD has said the board has denied you access. 
we, we didn't go because we want to pry into the personal enterprise of this company. We wrote to them saying, we'd like to have an engagement with you. And when an entity does not have anything to hide, then you engage with legislators. We ask you questions that we do have, you respond, and then we bring a report. That's why we do this. And we don't go to entities which are entirely private. We go to entities where the taxpayer has injected billions of shillings. So please encourage Rocco. If they have nothing to hide, they should be open to scrutiny. That's Thank all that you. we had gone Thank to you. do. Thank you. Honorable, honorable members, honorable members, honorable members, much as the speaker is a custodian of the law in the house, she or he is also a custodian of the privileges of the members of parliament. When you go out there, I want to request both the lead of opposition and uh, the committees that you give us ample time always when you you want to visit an, institu an institution. Like when you are going to attack, I even had to make sure that the road was clear for you. <laughs> Because they lock, they lock the road. I, I kept in touch with the leader of opposition. When he was going to day, they actually wrote to my office asking if it was proper. I said it is very proper for a leader of opposition to, to come and visit you. But, uh, but uh, all said, Honorable Minister, we have our money that is with the Rocco. We need to know how, how the money is being used. We, we need, and most importantly, what members are asking about this building here. This is our building. So you need to inter uh, have an interface with the Rocco and, and give a report to this house. Much obliged, Madam Speaker. However, Madam Speaker, meeting of such a yeah, nature, if yeah. you wanted to meet the board of Rocco, you would have invited them to Parliament. Site visit, you see the site. There is a procedure matter. There is a procedure matter. Thank you so much, Right Honourable Speaker for the opportunity. My procedural matter is in line with what the law presented. I have interest to know the criteria normally used for selection of companies to be bailed out. Therefore, I am seeking your indulgence whether it will not be prudent for the minister include that in his response. Thank you so much. I don't have to speak. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan. Thank you very much. Right that on one the speaker. Is Jonah. The other one is Jonathan. Thank you very much. Right on the speaker. Right on the speaker. We have Uganda Housing and Construction Company here in Uganda. Why wouldn't government empower the Uganda Housing and Construction, Co Construction Company other than giving money to Rocco, a Swiss company? We saw a number of our companies here in Uganda die. One, Zimwe died. There was Sembule Empire died. What? Honorable members, the honorable members, there is no problem giving Rocco money. But we want to see the value for the money that has been given to him. Huh? Next item. I, I have already ruled on that. Item three on the order paper. And there's Item three. Item three on the order paper. Statement by Minister on the commemoration of the UN International White Cane Day. Honourable members, as you are aware, the World.